hello friends here we'll be discussing the second function of the management right previously we are discussing the functions of the management so first planning we have discussed right now we will discuss the organizing so basically before going to start the discussion what do you mean by organize friends organizing means what see very simple see here in picture you can uh, see the how these different people the uh, they are organizing the things right organizing means what basically keeping in good format organizing right so for example see you are uh, suppose you are at a home right and you are having the home cupboard where you keep your clothes right so if your clothes are well arranged within your cupboard right so what you can say you will say my cupboard is well organized right so what is organizing organizing means basically doing the things in a good manner right so organizing refer to the simply you have to first understand the meaning of organizing see suppose you are working in the bank right and here is your computer right you are working uh, on a front desk and a lot of things are kept here in your desk right here may be a uh, different things right so what your manager will come and say why your desk is not properly organized you organize the thing properly so that it will look good right so basically basic meaning of the organizing is what you have to keep the things in organized manner in in neat and tidy manner right so let's start the actual syllabus introduction and the fundamental of the organizing so see planning is the first step in the process of managing an organization and second step is organizing so we were discussing the functions of a management right so first planning we have discussed right planning we have discussed in the previous session now second function is organize we have done the planning we have to organize so second function is organizing now organizing entails assigning the task grouping the task into department assigning the authority adequate responsibility as well as allocating uh, allocating the resources within the organization to achieve the common goal common goal means the goal of an organization so friends what do you mean by organizing organizing is a broader concept right it include you have to assign task to the employees right then you have to group task into the department for example see different task we are having for example say banking okay the best example is banking we are having different task what we are having task of mobilizing the deposit for the bank we have to disburse the loan to the customer we have to also source the third party product we have to also uh, implement the government business government schemes right so different task we are having as a bank then we will group task into the department so for different task we will have different department for example this liability there is deposit and the uh, loan we will have the asset liability management department right for third party we will have tie up with the insurance agent insurance company and for government business we are having the department like a government department government business department in our bank right means we will create the department we will have also authority means every department will be having one head right every department will have one head that means we will assign the authority then the responsibility obviously uh, the uh, authority comes with the responsibility as well as allocating the resources within the organization so we will allocate some human power under that heads so that they can function so here different people will be posted and they will work for their departments right so what is the organizing this complete all the group right they will work for achieving the common goals of the bank right so what i have to say simply organizing is uh, starts with the uh, assigning the task to a particular employees then uh, uh, you can uh, make the department in the uh, in the company or in the your factory apart from that you can assign the authority and the responsibility as well as you can allocate the resources to achieve the common goal this is basically the uh, organization uh, this is basically the organizing entails right so this is overview of organizing now see organizing is the process of establishing the organ uh, the organizing effective authority relationship between the selected task individual and the workplace to group work together in an efficient manner as well as the process of separating the work into the sections and department see organizing means what basically see 
basic what you have to understand organize means keep the uh, things in organized manner so you have to do the business of banking means what you do you will create different department right you will add, assign uh, each department will do their own task right you will provide them some resources for doing the work so this entirely right so different authority will be there different heads will be there for each department that means there is a authority there is a relationship between the uh, different task different uh, there is relation for example see government business department then loan department deposit section department so each department have their relationship right so obviously this combinedly you can say this is the part of what this is the part of organizing right so organizing you have to understand first concept organizing itself it is a you have to organize the business you have to organize the things in the business in the way so that we can say it will be easy for the doing the business right so see organizing itself the world word is self explanatory you have to keep the things organized in a manner so that it will be easy right so this is all about introduction part of the organizing now see planning is concerned with the establishing the what task to be performed and organizing is concerned with the how this task should be performed right so again planning refer to what to do and the organizing refer to how to do got it so the two difference you have to understand planning means what you do the plan for example you do the plan you do the plan what i have to uh, on a weekend i will go to the hill station this is your plan that means what to do on weekend organize means how to do so for that achieving that plan what do you do you will arrange one cab you will book one cab you will uh, pack up your luggage in, in the bag okay so this is what how you should do that task right so planning is basically what to do and organizing means how to do right so this is basic difference between planning and organizing now there is a organization design it is a process for shaping the way organization are structured and it run see design means what basically see prototype design see if i say uh, this is the design of pen for example simply see this is the design of a pen this is the cap this is body of a pen and it is the nib of the pen and here is the tip of the pen so what is that this is the design of the pen here is the logo of the pen here is the ink uh, ink box for the pen right here is a nib of the pen here is a tip of the pen so this is what basic structure basic design right in the similar way organization also have design right so it is a process for shaping the way organization and structure and run. means basically see uh, bank have a md then bank have the uh, different zonal heads we have to have different zonal heads right zonal head then bank we have regional head regional manager regional head right then bank will have the branch manager branch manager branch manager so this is what this is the structure of the bank and everybody has its own responsibility right so this is what i am i'm uh, able I'm, i want to convey you organization Your organization design means basically what is the structure of that organization and how it runs right it is the basic organization design now in conclusion the design of an organization need to consider the how individual and the group make their decision because organizing and the decision making are complement to one another so obviously see organize what is the purpose of organizing organizing means basically you are you are assigning some work to particular uh, employee right they are doing their work at best level apart from that there must be some authority there must be some relationship and once the authority comes with the relationship with the responsibility there must be a relationship among the different departments also so authority have to take the decision right if needed authority will take the decision at their level right so basically what what we can say organizing and the decision making these are two complementary things to each other right so basically this is organization design now what we will discuss the importance of organization now see importance of organization so why the organization uh, the organization is important right why it is necessary to organize the thing see the various department of the organization need to communicate and the coordinate to one of the most significant way to do is organizing see 
every department must need to communicate with all the department for example see there is department in the bank called as the asset liability management okay so what that department do is doing basically that is managing what is asset what is liability so that your bank will run in profit right if your liability is more than asset then bank will go into loss right so that that ratio out they have to maintain suppose there is department called as the asset and liability asset for a bank is loans right and liability for the bank is deposit so if that two department do not communicate their business with asset liability management then how the bank will run in profit because every department must communicate with other department so that there will be good functioning right so communication and coordination is important and how we can do we can do we can achieve it by the way of organizing the most important factor considered in the organizing are as under so see one by one efficiency in the administration so why we have to organize the thing why we have to achieve the organizing first thing because we can have the efficiency in the administration see efficiency in the administration can be achieved by collapsing jobs that are linked into the single area which bring together formerly separated department right so what is basically efficient uh, efficiency in the administration see how you can uh, have the better administration you can collapse the jobs right which are linked into the single area and uh, you can have the separate department if if it is necessary to create a separate department you can bring it under the separate de department basically see for example see uh, uh, for a banking perspective see deposit plus passbook printing right so customer comes to the branch and deposit the money right so once he deposit he need to uh, he need to print the passbook also right that means depositing the money and printing the passbook this is simply we can say correlated linked job so what we can do we can have the deposit section and adjacent to that we can have the passbook printer section in the branches right that means what we are making a department right in simple words so that the simple or the collapsing jobs we can link which are linked we can have in the single area right very simple so in that way we can make the administration better an efficient administration describe the activity that distinct departments engage in and the authority connection between those activity right so uh, what is efficient administration the good administration is one where activity that a distinct department engage in and authority connections between those activity that means there must be the different activity right and different activity must have an authority right and uh, that must have the connection that means coordination right so basically why organizing is important why the things to be organized because we can have the efficient administration second thing second thing why we need uh, the organizing is what second is the resource optimization resource optimization means what see organizing ensures that each work in the organization has a role and job that are good and fit for them see resource optimization so in the organization what is the biggest resource the human and the employee are the best and the biggest resources so see so person one want, uh, is a uh, is a uh, very much uh, very much i can say uh, brilliant very much the brilliant in the work for example say cash handling right cash counting say so he will be given the posi position of cashier the other person is very good in the loan section so he must be given the lo the loan advance department in the bank so person other is good in the third party so he must be given the responsibility for the selling the insurance third party product that means what the job which are good and fit for the employee to them we have to allocate their responsibility right so this is what basically the resource optimization so employee are the best resources and the biggest resource for an organization now see gaining expertise the process of creating the group and subdividing various activity the job based on the principle of division of labor is referred as the division of labor process it enable the completion of most work in the shortest amount of time so what do you mean by that why see why the organizing is important because if you do the organizing there will be gaining of expertise means what see very simple thing see again i will take the banking example because it is very easy to correlate right so banking we are having different work for example cash work is there in the bank passbook printing work is there 
then a loan work is there right third party insurance work is there right so different work we are having advanced section right then bills discounting right different work we are having dd so what do we do we will uh, we will break the task cash then uh, this work this work this work right so we will allocate one person to each work or two person three person right so what happen so this person will be doing only the cash work right this person is doing only the uh, this work this person is doing only loan this is only doing the insurance so what happen naturally so that person become expert in the work which he is doing right so for example see you can see the cashiers working in the branches so cashier is working in the branch since long period of time say uh, more than 15 years cashier is working in the bank as a cashier only right so he is now the uh, expert in the cash he is now expert in the field of cash right so gaining expertise is one of the important factor in the organizing right gaining expertise now fourth is what promoting the effective communication see what do you mean how the effective communication can be uh, promoted by using the organizing see organizing is a technique of fostering collaboration and the communication among the departments see due to organizing what happens the collaboration and the communication between the different departments increases right and uh, that's why we can say it is the, the organizing itself it is a good for effective communication right now creating the transparency so how organizing creates the transparency the task activity duty responsibility that are respected are detailed in the written document is called as the job description so what is the job description in see when the private company when you have to do the work right when you have to appoint there they will give you the job job description so uh, otherwise if you are appearing for the interview you as a candidate you can ask what is the jd sir what is the job description so through job description you will come to know what the things you have to do there on job right so basically this is the job description it include the task activity duty and the responsibility which you have to do right due to this the personnel are assigned with the power and the responsibility so in the jd you will get power also with the responsibility right power comes with the responsibility the great power comes with the great responsibility and this contribute to the organization's transparency and obviously this will result into the increase in the transparency right so this is what Uh, the important factor in the organizing now expansion and development obviously if we, the things are well if the things are well and organized so every company is having good see for example i will tell you see the bank bank is having separate department loan department advance department then a third party product uh, deposit section government scheme department so different departments are there. that means that bank is well organized there are different heads are there different employee working under there so bank is well organized now bank can think about the expansion because everything is well organized so obviously expansion and the development comes through the organizing got it so how you have to correlate you have to understand so organizing so when the resources are utilized a full with division of a labor then it will be able to increase the strength and the capacity to do the operations basically once you are having a good division of labor so good division of labor itself it is a part of organizing right when resources are used fully that means it is a part of organizing that means once you have in organized manner if you the if you have followed the organizing obviously there will be a chance of expansion and development of the businesses right so this is all about the importance uh, important factor of the organizing such a situation it is uh, easy for the organization to rise and expand its operations and the business so effective communication then transparency and the expansion okay now we have to uh, see different stages in the organizing process so first stage see first you have to understand there are total five stages in the process of organizing okay so see first is what defining and reviewing the plan and the objective of the company right so first obviously you will have some goal right so you will have some plans and objective for the company first thing you have to define that properly and if needed you can review it right next determining the work activity need to accomplish the objective right so we are having some objective first we have to define objective in second step we have to 
डिफाइन वट वर्क एक्टिविटी इन अकॉर्डेंस विथ वट आर अवर ऑब्जेक्टिव राइट मीन्स वट एक्टिविटी वी शुड डू राइट फॉर एग्जाम्पल अवर एम इज मेकिंग फॉर एग्जाम्पल पासिंग द सी ए वी एज अवर एम राइट सो वर्क एक्टिविटी मीन्स यू विल डिसाइड डेली टू हवर्स यू विल स्टडी दिस इज वट वर्क एक्टिविटी यू आर डिसाइडिंग देट कैटेगराइजिंग एंड ग्रुपिंग द इसेंशियल वर्क एक्टिविटी इन टू मैनेजेबल यूनिट सो वट यू डू यू विल मेक द कैटेगरी एंड द ग्रुप हाउ सी फॉर अ डेली आई विल स्टडी वन हवर द कंपलसरी पेपर वन हवर द इलेक्टिव पेपर दैट मीन्स यू आर कैटेगरिंग यूट से योर सेल्फ यू आर ग्रुपिंग समथिंग राइट सो दिस इज द पार्ट ऑफ कैटेगराइजिंग एंड ग्रुपिंग द इसेंशियल वर्क नेक्स्ट द असाइनिंग एक्टिविटी एंड डेलीगेट अथॉरिटी सो हियर वट इट मीन्स मीन्स इफ यू आर हैविंग इन द इन द इन फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन द ऑर्गनाइजेशन असाइनिंग एक्टिविटी मीन्स एंड अथॉरिटी मीन्स यू विल असाइन द एक्टिविटी फॉर एग्जाम्पल दिस वर्क मस्ट बी डन बाई दिस दैट पीपल राइट दिस वर्क मस्ट बी डन बाई दैट एम्प्लॉय सो वर्क यू हैव अलोकेटेड अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट यू हैव टू ऑल्सो गिव द अथॉरिटी फॉर एग्जाम्पल आई एम गिविंग यू द वर्क बट आई एम ऑल्सो गिविंग यू द अथॉरिटी फॉर एग्जाम्पल आई विल टेल यू फॉर एग्जाम्पल सी ब्रांच मैनेजर विल बी गिवन दी एक्टिविटी ऑफ वॉट एक्टिविटी मीन्स द टारगेट बेसिकली अचीविंग दी फिफ्टी क्रोर्स ऑफ द बिजनेस राइट ब्रांच मैनेजर सो ब्रांच मैनेजर शुड ऑल्सो गिवन द अथॉरिटी मीन्स वॉट सो डिफरेंट पीपल वर्किंग अंडर दी ब्रांच मैनेजर सिर्फ इफ एनी पीपल वर्किंग अंडर द ब्रांच मैनेजर इज रिफ्यूज टू डू द वर्क ब्रांच मैनेजर मस्ट बी गिवन अथॉरिटी टू कंप्लेंट अबाउट हिम इन दी हायर स्टेज दैट मीन्स वॉट बेसिकली यू मस्ट बी गिवन अथॉरिटी यू मस्ट बी गिवन दी पावर सो अनादर एग्जाम्पल अगेन द ब्रांच मैनेजर इज गिवन टारगेट फॉर एग्जाम्पल फिफ्टी सी आर राइट बट ब्रांच मैनेजर इफ द बैंक थिंग्स दैट दैट बैंक मैनेजर शुड डू दी फिफ्टी क्रोर्स ऑफ बिजनेस दैन बैंक मैनेजर मस्ट बी गिवन अथॉरिटी वॉट the sanctioning the loan up to say 5 cr okay that means authority must be given when you are assigning the activity right so this is what the stage next is what the designing a hierarchy of relationship there must be a hierarchy for example in the bank itself say we are having the sub staff we are having staff right bank by the clerk the cashiers we are having then the assistant manager we are having manager then we are having the branch head right then we are having senior manager then chief manager right then we are having the regional manager we are having the zonal manager right we are having executive director then md ceo so this is what the hierarchy in the bank right so basically designing the hierarchy of relationship is the uh, the fifth stage in the organizing process right so repeat what five stages we are generally having we are having we should first define the objective define the objective review the objective then determine what work activity need to do for that objective next we have to make the group or the category for uh, the work activity then we have to assign the authority to do the work and design the hierarchy for that work right so these are the five stages in the organizing process right so you can uh, just go through the pictorial representation also okay now organizing process in general the process of organization can be broken down into the five stages which include review of the plan so see one by one uh, we have to discuss so for that five things here we have uh, checked in into the summary form now one by one we will discuss first is what the reviewing the uh, review of the plan and objective right so see here the plans formulated by the management right the initial step for the manager should be review the plan and they should continue to do even if the plans have been modified right so for example so management say for the banking perspective say the higher management will set the target for you right so target itself it is a plan for us right for bankers now management is setting the target say 50000 50 crores of the business now uh, the branch manager how to continue if in the semi annually what happen manager thinks that that branch is performing very well and they have achieved the target 50 crore in the uh, half year itself so bank uh, the management will review the target 200 cr so even if the targets or the objective are uh, modified the manager has to continue the plans as per the modification next the determining the work activity need to accomplish the objective so uh, to achieve the 50 crores of the business branch manager must uh, define must have some plan for example how much housing loan how much sme loan he can do then how much personal loan he can sanction how much uh, the other is uh, the uh, foot uh, footfall business that is naturally occurring business so work activity he must uh, have to do for example for how much housing loan he will have how 
how much semi loan he will have how much personal loan he will have he will determine the activity right next manager need to accomplish the list and conduct in depth analysis of the task activity that must be completed to realize the organization's objective so these are different uh, different what activity that manager has been determined right so uh, making the first you have to review the plan and objective then determine the work activity third is what categorizing the grouping essential work activity into the manageable unit means what a manager might choose the group of activity using one of these four departmental uh, mo departmentalization model okay so see categorization and grouping see once you have so i repeat the example okay 50 crores of the business bank has given as an objective as a plan so here the branch manager will segregate that the branch manager will segregate into housing loan personal loan sme loans right so different loans we will categorize how we can achieve the business now we are having departmentalization model what is that functional model geographic model product based model and customer based model means what functional means what basically this is not applicable for the banking right so this will applicable for any company so how you can function the company right what is what is your functional line geographic means what for example uh, geographic means see in the north what will be more sell in north the uh, dhoti and kurta is more wearable product base means what what will be the most sellable product that you will choose customer means what what is the customer base high net worth individual or the poor people are there so can use uh, you can use the government scheme so depending on there is a different departmentalization model you can either choose functional geographic product or the customer okay so based on that you have to make category and a grouping of what what is the essential work activity that must be grouped or making the category okay into the manageable unit so that it is be, it will be easy to do the work right so this is the third step Four is what the assigning activity uh, with delegate authority obviously you have to assign the activity and authority so that it will, there will be the proper workflow now see manager delegate particular responsibility to a particular employee right so obviously for example zonal manager will delegate the work to regional manager he will delegate the work to branch manager so responsibility will flow obviously from higher to lower level as they can grant the authority also so once the zonal manager say from the branch manager you should do the 50 crores of the business for this year branch manager will say okay i will do the business but give me the authority that i can sanction the five crores of the loan in the branch level okay that means responsibility must be with the authority authority means basically you will have some right authority right so to carry out the responsibility that have been given to them okay so assigning activity and uh, should uh, delegate some authority power also next is what designing a hierarchy of relationship so obviously there must be uh, designing of a hierarchy like for example in the branch itself we are having clerk officer manager senior manager like that okay so hierarchy must be there so it is a responsibility of a manager to analyze the vertical decision making what is the vertical decision making vertical means it is upward horizontal means parallel right relationship that exists through the organization so what do you mean by vertical decision so vertical uh, vertical relationship means what see again the uh, the the clerk officer manager senior manager chief manager this is vertical authority right horizontal authority means what see here it is the branch right branch have the proposal of five cr for loan sanctioning so branch it will send to the what the uh, the credit department okay so it is horizontal planning it is not higher branch is sending only the credit department credit department will uh, seek some uh, seek some information from the audit department so it is they are working horizontally but they are not working uh, vertically vertically means what branch is sending five crores of proposal to the zonal office the uh, zonal office is not able to uh, do uh, do this it will send to the head office so this is vertical right so that you have to understand vertical decision making and horizontal decision making relationship must be created now manager should uh, then use the organizational chart to draw the relationship between different departments so that can be done right so basically what you have to understand uh, there must be the hierarchy of relationship next the process of organizing also include determining the object so these five we have already discussed now it also include what determining the objective means what again the first step in the process of organizing is what 
to calculate the amount of work that need to be done so determining the objective means what see what is the objective objective means what work basically you have to do this is the objective right so 50 crores of the business to do so this is what amount of work you have to do next classifying the activity single person cannot be made responsible for managing all the activity obviously so as such the total work is broken into the smaller unit and distributed among the employees in accordance with their skill and the capability so obviously you have to classify the activity means what one person cannot do all work right so that big work must be divided into small group and that must be assigned to the uh, individual or the group of people depending on what depending on their capacity to do work depending on their will to do work right depending on their skill set to do it right so this is this is what basically classifying the activity now see next is what assigning of duty means what after classifying the task that the employee are given only one job is tailored their particular set of skill capability and the ability so based on ability capacity and skill the duty or the task must be given to the individual employee after that a document called as the job description that will define the employee duty and the responsibility so obviously once you define you have classified the activity right so once you have broken down the activity so particular activity must be given to them to that employee only who is capable to do it that is assigning of the duty so basically for assigning the duty the important uh, document called as the job description is important here all duty what you need to do what the company is expecting from the employee is given for example well, if you see very simple i will give you example see when you join the bank when you join the bank you will receive one office order right uh, you might have received right uh, many of them are following the banks i don't know which bank is following so when you join the bank you receive the office order first right so here it is a one page will be there and here different work assigned to you that is given here you your manager will take your signature right so means what basically here is the different work will be assigned that means when you join the bank itself they will give you a piece of paper where if you join as a clerk there will be the detail of job description what you have to do so this is basically the job description jd document right so it is well helpful for assigning the duty so next what we have discussed is the principles of the organizing so see here the principle of organizing so friends see here the principles of organizing so what are the principles see the organizing principles so as the a guideline for organizing processes right so basically what is every principle it is itself it is a guideline right now see the essential principle are given below so what are the essential principle see one by one see principle of objective means what basically you see we have to discuss that all principle in detail right so here i will give you the brief idea about the principle principle of objective means what simply we should have the objectives when there is organization there must be objective and goals so that we can decide our plans how we can achieve the objective right then is what the principle of specialization that means there must be a specialized staff to do the objective for achieving the objective for doing the work there must be a specialized staff right for example the employee which are working in specific department for example say cashier working in the cash so he is the specialized in the field of cash right handling the cash activity similarly the principle of, uh, the principle of the coordination means there must be a coordination among the different departments of the company principle of authority means there must be authority say branch manages the authority in the branch right principle of responsibility again authority comes with the responsibility so the branch manager is having overall responsibility of the branch for achieving the targets of the branch then principle of span of a control so what is the span of control you have to understand see uh, the span of control means basically how much person are working under you this is the span of control how many people you are controlling right so simply the number of people under working me is my span of control so what is the span of control understand new term is here right span of control for example branch manager right under the branch manager cashier is there loan officer is there right deposit officer is there accountant is there then sub staff is there so lot of people are under branch manager that means this is the span of control of a branch manager right now 
principle of a balance so what is the principle of balance that means there must be the balance of work basically right so you cannot give uh, the uh, you cannot bifurcate the employee you cannot do any discrimination while allocating the work to different your uh, employee right that means equal work must be given to the equal number of employee so that there must be the balance of work right so there should not be any discrimination while allocating the work this is the principle of a balance right so this is the principle now see rest of the principles principle of continuity what do you mean by principle of continuity so here the continuity refer to the how you are easily adaptable to the changes right principle of continuity for example see if you are working on a suppose the finical system you are using in the branches right version is finical 7.0 now if you are uh, uh, supposed to migrate to the finical 10 that is upgraded version of finical right so that means the your bank staff your bank working employees are really to adopt the changes right so this is what you can continue with doing the business so this is the principle of a continuity so here you have to understand principle of continuity means how much you are adaptable how much the organization is adaptable to the changes right for example if you are having the production line if you are having the factory and production line is manual now you are going to install the machinery so that you will produce more right so this is what the principle of a continuity now principle of unity of a direction so what is unity of a direction means what see simply i will tell you md tells us the direction right so the uh, the md right now the rest of the employees in the organization only follow the direction given by the md right because he is the managing director okay this is what this is the principle of unity of a direction now principle of a unity of a command so what do you mean by principle of unity of a command and what is the principle of unity of a direction that you have to understand right so uh, friends see here what we are discussing the principle of unity of direction so the unity of direction we have discussed that, right now what do you mean by unity of a command then unity of a command means what see here direction who can give the direction the apex body see md in the uh, organization now unity of a command means what see i am working under my uh, see suppose i am the clerk suppose i am the clerk right so here i will clear it suppose i am an officer right so above my officer there will be a branch manager then there will be a regional manager then there will be a zonal manager right so different uh, authority i am having so unity of command means what as i am working as an officer lay say, say am assistant manager i should only report to the branch manager means what only one authority should be to me so that i can report to only one authority right i should not report directly to, to the uh, rm or the jm because only there must be only one reporting authority for one person understand there must be one reporting authority to one person that is what principle of a command understand principle of exception what is the uh, principle of exception see generally uh, exception means what the top management should interfere only when something goes wrong means what it is only in the exceptional cases see what is happening in the branch branch manager is supposed to take the care right the zonal manager or the md or any higher authority should not interfere in the branch functioning i am giving you the practical example so that you can easily understand right unless until there is some exception right so unless and until there is some exceptional only uh, the top management should interfere otherwise top management should not interfere in the small things right this is the principle of exception principle of a simplicity means what obviously you should have the simple task to do right there must be the simplicity in doing the work there, unless and until it is not necessary why to make the work complex right so there, there should be the simplicity next principle of efficiency what is efficiency efficiency when the efficiency increases when the uh, the cost to incur the business decreases that means we are more efficient so obviously you have to uh, produce the output with a minimum cost it is the principle of uh, increase in the efficiency principle of efficiency and the next is principle of uh, scalar so what is the scalar principle simply scalar principle is also called as the scalar chain okay it is a management principle predicted on the establishing an unbroken line of authority 
from the highest level of management on down okay so what is scalar principle it is a management principle predicted on the establishing an unbroken line of authority from highest to uh, lower level means what see what is actually the scalar principle there must be a scale scale see scalar principle means what scale there should be a scale so what is scale in the uh, in the simply ruler 1 2 3 4 5 6 that means what scale is increasing that means top management here is the lower level management so see what happened in scalar principle there is a chain of a communication from top management to the lower level of a management which is unbroken line of authority right so this is the principle of a scalar right so these are the principle of organizing right so we have to discuss uh, the principles in detail here is just overview to you principle of objective specialization coordination authority responsibility span of a control the principle of balance principle of continuity unity of direction unity of a command exception simplicity efficiency and the scalar principle okay now we'll move uh, deciding the details work specialization now see work specialization what is work specialization so very simple this concept is synonymous with the term division of a labor so what we do in division of labor whole work will divide into the parts and we uh, allocate the part of work to the different employees right this is basically division of work division of labor so this is very much synonymous with work specialization so this employee is doing this kind of work so what happened due to this this employee becomes specialist in doing that work this employee will become specialist doing in this work so everybody will be sp uh, special okay he will be specialized doing that work in their field right so this is the work specialization now see authority what is authority the legitimate power see i am the authority for uh, for uh, sanctioning the loan so i am having that of legitimate the legal power so the legitimate power that delegate the manager so that they can take decision issue order and allocate the resources in order to accomplish the goals of the organization it is simply the authority so what is authority authority means you are having some legitimate power okay that is delegated to the manager that means the manager is having the power okay manager is not here representing the branch manager the every manager in every industry right so middle level management will uh, should have some legal power the legitimate power the executive power so that he can take some decision he can even issue the order their subordinates right and he can use the maximum resources he should uh, be given some resources so that uh, he will complete the assigned targets or assigned goals okay this is simply the authority now uh, next what we have to discuss is the uh, chain of command okay so second i think uh, authority we have discussed now the chain of a command so what is the chain of a command c the chain of command is c we have discussed right the in the previous session chain of a command right unity of a command we have discussed here the chain of command is starts from top level and work its way it down obviously who will give command top management will give command to the lower to middle middle to lower like that obviously it is a continuous chain of authority that uh, in the end in the end it connect every individual with the most senior position in the organization so obviously ob it is very obvious see md gives command to ed executive director they will give to the command to their different head for example say zonal heads then they will give command to the regional heads they will give command to their a different cluster heads then after that there may be the branch heads right so different head is there right so every uh, higher authority can give command to their lower authority when a branch head can give command to their staff in the branches right so this is what the chain of command right now the two guiding principle that under uh, pin it are the scalar principle and the unity of a command so here you have to understand see this is the chain of command right so higher leader giving command to the uh, next and they can give command to the next right like that very simple now we have to understand what do you mean by the scalar principle scalar principle means uh, simply this person uh, uh, can uh, will be under this person this will be under this person okay this will be under this this will be under this so see scalar principle means what simply there is order there is order there is a ranking from top to bottom there they can issue the order okay right and there must be a proper connection means what there must be a proper communication right see sorry for example you will get see 
C is given some order to B, B has given some order to A, A has given some order to D and D has given some order to E. So when some order passes from C to E, right? So whatever order passed by C, that must be without fail reach to E. Okay, without fail reach to E. So this is what the scalar chain. And what is the unity of a command? Unity of a command means what? The simply uh, one person should report to the other person. This is what the unity of a command, right? So that means one entity, sorry, one individual only have one boss and that should have only another boss. One person, for example, see if, if uh, there is order in the branch that every assistant manager or the officer working in the branch should report to first branch manager, then zonal manager, then the uh, regional manager, then the uh, cluster manager, then the uh, head office. So whether it is uh, possible to him to report to, because everybody will suggest something, everybody will look at the work. So it is not feasible for the bank. So this is what the unity of command means. One person should report to only one person. Now, what is unity of command? See in detail. According to the principle of unity of a command, each worker should have just one manager or one supervisor or one reporting other. That means one should report to one. That is the unity of command. Now, who to whom he is uh, directly accountable for the work related matter. Right? Obviously, that means one person reporting to only one manager or supervisor or any reporting authority. So that is must be one. That oneness is called as the unity of a command. Okay. So this is basic unity of a command. Now you have to understand uh, what we have discussed now. Okay. So chain of a command. Right. So uh, and a unity of a command. So here see one person reporting to one person. That is what the unity of a command. Okay. And unity of a direction means what we have discussed. See image. Or oh, suppose this is the MD, right? So MD is given direction how to work, and remaining are following. This is the unity of a direction. Okay, that you have to understand. Now, again, what is the scalar principle or the scalar chain? See, scalar principle also called as scalar chain. It is a management principle predicted on establishing an unbroken line of authority. So there is a line of authority, but that must be unbroken. There must be a communication connecting all managers working at the various level. Simply. All managers, say zonal manager, connecting with regional manager, connecting with what the branch manager, connecting with what the branch staff. Okay, so this is what the scalar principle, where uh, there is unbroken line of authority. So he is reporting, he is reporting to him, he will report him, he will report him like that. Unbroken authority, right? This is the scalar principle. Now see, it involves a concept called as the gang plank. Important for your exam point of view. Gang plank, which allows the subordinate to connect a superior or his superior in an emergency using method that uh, uh, contradict the hierarchy of a control. So see, see uh, what I have to say. Scalar principle is just opposite with what the gang plank. Gang plank. What happened? See, the branch manager should report to first regional manager. Regional manager can report to the zonal manager. They can report to the executive director. They can report to the MD CEO of the bank. Okay. Now what happened? Suppose branch manager directly reporting to the MD or CEO. Then zonal manager and regional manager they were skipped. So this process, this 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 thing is what it is the gang plank. Got it? That means you are reporting to highest authority, right? Supposed to be superior or next to your boss. That is what gang plank. Right? Very easy. Now, but only that should be done only in case of emergency. Okay, it should not be a regular practice. However, immediate superiors need to brief the situation as soon as possible. If you are reporting, for example, say, uh, I will give you example. You are the assistant manager, right? And in the branch, in the branch itself, what happened? There is some, uh, there is some, uh, say, I will say, there is some uh, flood came in your uh, area. Due to this, there are branches under the water. So, assistant manager immediately called to whom? The zonal head to take uh, the important step, right? After that, the assistant manager should also inform to the branch manager. This is our scene in our branch, right? That means uh, you, you must uh, brief the situation to your superior also. Okay, this is what about the uh, this gang plank. Now, see here. So what is the scalar chain is what? See, F is reporting to D, D to B, A, C, D, E. This is the chain of uh, scalar chain. Now what happened? This is proper order F to G. What happened? F directly report to G, skipping their next bosses. Okay. Suppose F is what here? The assistant manager. Here is what? Suppose I will say the branch manager. Here is zonal manager. Right. Here is say, I will say executive director. Okay. Here is say board of director. 
uh, here is md okay here is a board of director okay like that so assistant manager directly reporting to the board of director this is what the gang plan okay now uh, what do you mean by delegation so it is very simple delegation means what the delegating the responsibility or the authority of accountability of work to other people or subordinate it is called a delegation for example suppose the branch manager is want to go on a leave right what happen what he will do he will hand over his keys keys means what the strong room keys right this is the practical example i am giving so that it will be easy to you understand delegation okay the branch manager want to go on a leave so he will hand over his keys the strong room keys the locker keys to whom to his subordinate say one uh, assistant manager so he the branch manager handing his authority to the assistant manager for the period when he is on a leave right so in a similar way the delegation of a responsibility also and the authority also given uh, to other people uh, it may be subordinate or the colleague it is the delegation right so once a branch manager is on leave the assistant manager will be uh, given the power in the fenacle uh, like a bm power right so that he can post the things which are in the power of the branch manager posting in the fenacle or posting in the system posting of voucher plain uh, it may receipt or payment or even uh, sanctioning power loan because if the branch manager is on long day long holiday say for four months right then the assistant manager will be given power of branch manager you run the branch we are giving you responsibility also authority also and accountability also if anything happen you are accountable okay this is what the delegation so delegation comes with the responsibility plus authority plus accountability remember okay this is the delegation see here the best example of delegation right very easy now span of a control so i repeat we have discussed right span of control we have already discussed now here we again discuss the span of control simply simply it is very simple concept is very simple the number of worker who are under manager supervision is simply the span of control sometime it is also referred as the span of management so simply see that one person is uh, the boss of this lady that that person and that person that means he is span of control of a three right this is the span of control means how many workers are uh, working under you so number of workers uh, who are under the manager supervision is nothing but the span of control or span of management also okay now when the manager has a high number of people reporting to him it is said to that wide span of influence right and when manager is said to have the restricted range of authority when when there is a few uh, reporting uh, to their so for the purpose of supervision that means if only three people are there for under this we can say restricted range of authority if under that number of people are there right more than three or many people are there it is what the uh, what the it is called as the wide range of influence okay very simple name itself it is self explanatory see understand only concept span of control means number of people working under you how many are reporting to you okay how many um, the worker are under working uh, the supervision of a manager this is the span of control it is also called as the span of management now wide span of management means more number of worker under you restricted range of authority means less number of worker under you okay so this is very simple span of a control now here we'll stop here the first part of this uh, lecture okay because uh, time is limited now you have one task you can download our application banker zone cib this application is available in the uh, play store for android so you can download it link is given in the description apart from that you have to join our telegram group okay uh, for telegram group you can search banker zone cib otherwise you can directly search c a i i b right and you can write after that bz without space c a i b z you will get our banker zone group in the telegram also apart from that the most important thing you can subscribe us on the youtube right and you can uh, comment what you are liking and what is your expectations thank you friends we will continue our discussion in the next chapter